On today's episode, we are getting into the latest space news, including new updates on the SpaceX Starship and Moonlander project. 5,000 exoplanets have been discovered. The solar orbiter goes in for a close-up picture of the sun, and NASA finally opens 50-year-old moon rocks. So, let's get going. We have good news and bad news about the SpaceX Starship program, and luckily for us, even the bad news isn't that bad. So let's start off with the FAA, who are needed to give their ruling on the environmental approval of Elon Musk's Starbase launch facility for an orbital test flight of Starship. Getting approval for suborbital launches like all of the previous Starship tests that we have seen from Starbase was apparently pretty easy. But getting approval to launch something all the way into space is a bit more complicated. And fair enough, there definitely should be some kind of oversight body ruling on this kind of thing. The FAA was supposed to deliver that ruling initially by the end of 2021, then it was pushed to the end of February, then it was pushed to March 28th, which is today, and we are now finding out that they have pushed the goalpost forward in time again to April 29th. So, that's unfortunate. It's more annoying that they keep setting expectations and then not meeting them, over and over again. The FAA were also sure to note, once again, that there are multiple possible outcomes from this environmental assessment, ranging from a finding of no significant impact to the requirement of an environmental impact statement, writing in their statement, quote, The completion of the environmental review will not guarantee that the FAA will issue a license to SpaceX to launch its Starship slash Super Heavy vehicle. SpaceX's license application must also meet FAA safety, risk, and financial responsibility requirements, end quote. Not that that particularly matters right now anyway, because Elon Musk has confirmed that SpaceX will be using the new version 2 of their Raptor engine for the first orbital flight of the Starship. Elon said that he expects to have 39 of these new rocket engines ready to go by April, and then it will take another month after that to have them integrated into a new pair of ship and booster. So the 420 Starship that we know and love will not be going into space after all. SpaceX are still using these vehicles for ongoing tests of the launch tower facilities, but Elon confirmed that a new combo will be brought out for the big show. Elon basically said that Raptor 2 is more powerful and more reliable and much more likely to result in a successful test flight. So, even if the FAA does take another month, the SpaceX timeline is officially pushed back to May anyways. Now, in the good news category, NASA recently made an announcement about the future of their moon landing program, and they have already given SpaceX the green light for a second version of the Lunar Starship. In addition to opening up bidding for one additional vehicle under what they call the Sustaining Lunar Development Effort. So, in the announcement, NASA says that they plan to exercise a provision in the current human landing system contract with SpaceX called Option B. This would fund the development of changes to the SpaceX Starship lander to support additional requirements and allow for a second crewed demonstration mission to the moon. One difference about the sustaining lunar development effort is that the landers will have to be designed for greater performance than under the HLS competition, including the ability to transport more astronauts and cargo to the lunar surface and support longer stays. Considering that the Lunar Starship already far exceeded NASA requirements for the first competition, this really should not be very much additional product development. This opens up the bidding process again to companies like Blue Origin and Dynetics, who lost to SpaceX in the first round, and anyone else who wants to throw their hat in the ring and design a new moon lander. So the original desire for two separate moon lander vehicles lives on. NASA officials said the decision to hold a second competition did not reflect a lack of confidence in SpaceX on its HLS development. Jim Free, Associate Administrator for Exploration Systems Development, said, quote, We're still targeting 2025 for that landing. SpaceX continues to make good progress towards that mission, but beyond Artemis 3, we want to increase the healthy competition and advance our lunar capabilities to support more science, 
more exploration, and an emerging lunar marketplace. Now, we wait and see if NASA can persuade Congress to provide them the funding to make this all happen. Remembering that the last time they tried to fund private development of a moon lander, the agency received only one quarter of the federal money they asked for. NASA officials were questioned on this several times during the press conference and refused to say much about it other than that they are confident that the Biden administration's next budget will follow through on the funding NASA requires. On March 21st, NASA confirmed the discovery of our 5,000th exoplanet, the result of three decades of space telescope development and just the tip of the iceberg in our discovery of the greater universe. The 5K milestone was reached with the latest batch of 65 planets recorded in NASA's Exoplanet Archive, which contains exoplanet discoveries that appear in peer-reviewed scientific papers and that have been confirmed using multiple detection methods or by analytical techniques. An exoplanet is just any planet discovered outside of our solar system. It's only been within the last decade that we have really been able to confirm the existence of these bodies in large numbers with devices like the Kepler Space Telescope and the Transiting Exoplanet Survey Satellite. Our capability to hunt exoplanets will be greatly increased with the operation of the James Webb Space Telescope later this year, and that will be followed by upcoming devices like the Nancy Grace Roman Space Telescope expected to launch in 2027, and the Atmospheric Remote Sensing Infrared Exoplanet Large Survey or Aerial Module set to be launched by ESA in 2029. Exoplanet discovery is done primarily by the transit method. Astronomers will consistently observe a star and look for the slight dimming effect that occurs when a planet passes in between the star and the telescope. In some cases, we can measure the changes in the wavelengths of light as they pass through the atmosphere of these planets, and that gives us a picture of what elements are present inside that atmosphere. This helps us make educated guesses about the composition of these distant planets. Instruments like the James Webb will not only expand our capability to identify exoplanets, but it will greatly increase our ability to identify their atmospheric composition and characteristics. The European Solar Orbiter spacecraft made its closest approach to the Sun on March 26th, getting to one-third of the Sun-Earth distance. This latest pass has taken the probe as close to the Sun as 48.3 kilometers to collect another high-resolution image of our star. ESA have already released this insane picture on March 24th, which was captured on March 7th by the Solar Orbiter's Extreme Ultraviolet Imager which has so far been the most detailed photo of the sun ever taken. That image was created from 75 million kilometers away, so we can expect a significant increase in detail from the new photo to come. As crazy as the March 24th image is, we are only about two weeks away from a drastically higher resolution shot. Since Solar Orbiter's launch in February 2020, ground control teams have been gradually tightening the spacecraft's orbit around the sun. The previous closest approaches happened farther away from the sun at about half the sun-earth distance. Future close encounters will see the Solar Orbiter dive up to 42 million kilometers away from the sun's surface at its nearest point. This is still nowhere near as close as NASA's Parker Solar Probe gets to the sun, However, the environment that that probe faces is so hot that it can't even carry a sun-facing camera. So the job of sun photography belongs to the solar orbiter. NASA scientists have unsealed an extraterrestrial time capsule 50 years after astronauts collected the rock and dust from the moon and sealed it away before returning to Earth. The lunar sample collected on the Apollo 17 mission is one of the last remaining untouched pieces of the moon that we have available here on Earth. NASA scientists cracked the seal in a slow process executed on March 21st and 22nd. The move came with added significance as we are on the eve of NASA's first uncrewed launch of the Artemis program to return humans to the moon. Artemis 1 is scheduled to launch no earlier than May. These delayed sample openings are a key part of the scientific process. We knew full well in the 1970s 
that future technology would allow for significantly more complex analysis of the moon soil samples. So we resisted the urge to open them all at once and set a few away for later examination. The sample was stored inside a special tube sealed in the moon's vacuum in 1972, requiring scientists to use specialized tools and a good sense of organization to keep track of all the pieces. The sample was collected by astronauts Eugene Cernan and Harrison Schmidt in the Taurus Littrow Valley. Scientists hope this sample will be able to help with preparation of the Artemis moon program, which plans to land astronauts on the moon later in this decade. NASA's astro-materials curator Francis McCubin said in a statement, We have an opportunity to address some really important questions about the moon by learning from what has been recorded and preserved in the regolith of these Apollo samples. We curated these samples for the long term so that scientists 50 years in the future could analyze them. Through Artemis, we hope to offer the same possibilities for a new generation of scientists. Meet us back here every week for more updates on everything aerospace industry and interstellar exploration related. Make sure to give the video a thumbs up today if you liked it. That really helps us out for real. And subscribe to the Space Race for more videos just like this. We do one long form essay and one news update every week. And if you'd like more, we've got two more on the screen for you right now.